Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Another three part series for you this, this time around and it is coming from Turntable Blending House. Um, now this company got in touch with me via email and I didn't really pay attention to it at the start because so many emails get sent to the, the email address associated with this channel. A lot of it is just spam really. Um, but they kept being like, hey, we want you to try these. So I was like, oh, if this is legit, cool, send it through. Um, so they said, nice little letter from Ali and Gordon, who are the two folks behind it. In the set itself, we have three blends. Uh, track one, which we're trying today, is called Joy, Division and Invention. Track two is called Firestarter. And track three is called Purple Haze. Um, track two is Peated. Track three is not, so this series will probably go track one, two, and three, just to keep it in order. But yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a, an interesting approach to whiskey. And it came with this booklet, which is one of the most informative booklets I've ever seen any blended whiskey come with. Um, just like a basic intro, and then it goes through each product. So if you want to like pause your screen at this bit. Here we have the breakdown of everything which is in this blend. So for those of you that may have been out of focus, I have no idea, but for those of you that are curious, uh, this is 40%, 40% Linkwood, matured in a virgin oak cask, 24% uh, Girvan in X red wine casks, it's kind of fun straight away, 19% uh, Strathclyde grain in X cognac barrels, also kind of fun, and 17% Nocdu um, in chinkapin barrels. Uh, Chinkapin specifically is a, is a very unique type, well I don't know if it's unique, but it's a very specific type of wood from the Chinkapin mountain range. Um, I think Jura were the first brand to kind of do something with Chinkapin, um, but now it's kind of kicking around everywhere. Um, but yeah, Nocdu in here. You don't see a lot of um, independent Nocdu at all really. So it's in the glass, everything is natural colour, everything is non chill filtered, and everything is 46% across the board too. Um, track one obviously is going to meant to be your approach to things, your intro to something, um, give you an essence of what their whiskey is about, and in relation to the album, track one should always give you an insight into what that band's about too, especially if you think about track one of your favourite album. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of mine. Um, rock and Roll Star, you know, uh, Cherub Rock, pretty sure that's the first track on Siamese Dream, if it isn't then I've got that very wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, loads of stuff, right? But, in the glass is a stunningly, typically, typical whiskey colour, nothing outrageous about that. But let's see if we can pick up some of these component parts. It's definitely tropical. Um, cognac is such, I'm delving a bit more into cognac now and cognac matured, or cognac cask matured things that it's becoming a bit more prevalent on my nose when I pick these things up. But with cognac, I always get like toffee, like hot toffee or like a, a toffee sauce in a pan. There's always like this sweetness to it, but also like a natural sort of heat, which I do get here. But there's quite a lot of just burnt toffee caramel aromas, but we're dealing with chinkapin oak. It actually didn't state if that was virgin oak or not, I don't believe. No, it just says a chinkapin barrel, whereas the linkwood element is actually in virgin oak. So we'll, we'll assume the chinkapin is a refill cask. If you throw your nose very deep into this, you're going to pick up some brown sugary molasses, almost like pomegranate molasses kind of notes. As if you pull back a little bit. The bouquet of it is all pineapple and mango. Very apricotty, very peachy. The Girvan and the red wine cast we're just going to put to one side for the minute. 
that gingery spiciness that I always associate with Linkwood, wonderfully present throughout all of that, it does make up 40% of the product and it's in virgin oak so it's going to be a bit hotter and spicier anyway. Yeah, that is like the dominant lead part, down the middle of your tongue. On either side of it, what we've got here is that cognac thing, that hot, toffee, soft raisiny fruit thing. It's kind of spiraling around. It seems to move around my palate. And it keeps interjecting that linkwood spiciness, uh, that gingeriness with just like a, a bit of tempered sugar, which is quite nice. The chinka pin thing, not picking up too much of it, and like, I keep forgetting if it's knock do or knock can do. It's knock do. It wouldn't it wouldn't matter either way because both spirit styles are so light. But with knock do, the spirit is so easy drinking. It's one of the it's 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 up there with like car do in terms of softness typically. The Gervin and the red wine thing is pretty unusual. So as I talk to you now. There is this nice, very familiar note of mentholy bourbon cask and virgin oak influence. There's a little bit of raisininess coming from it. There's no sherry cask in this, so we're going to put that on the cognac. But spiralling, again, sort of in and around all the back of my palate, is this beautiful kind of red cherry, sorry, black cherry, red fruit. That's kind of mixing in with this mentholy thing and it's becoming this sort of very cleansing and very clear. But I did track one. Track one's pretty good. That was really loud then, sorry. And even on the second sip, the cognac's becoming a bit more present. The gingery linkwoodiness is still there. And then, obviously it doesn't really state what red wine it's in, I don't think it particularly matters. But obviously grain is naturally quite sweet, or grain whiskey, I should say. But you're getting this kind of tannicky, again, black cherry, strawberry cream, red fruit sort of feel to it. But a pretty approachable style. The only thing these whiskies don't have on them really is an age statement, um, but they are pretty open with the contents of it. So win some, lose some. Um, if they do indeed intend to replicate these, then it would make sense to not put an age statement on them. But as long as they're still quite open with all this information, I think that's quite good. These bottles roll out at 59.99 each. Um, I've only seen them for sale on Master of Malt right now. And they have them at just under 60 pounds a bottle. But I think in the grand scheme of blended whiskey, you know, if, you're, if you like blended whiskey and blended whiskey is your normal sort of everyday haunt, this is something I can see you really getting into because the balance on these is quite interesting. They're using some malt whiskey, which isn't, I mean, you know, Noctu's used a lot in blends, but it's never talked about as much. Whereas, um, you know, things like Linkwood, Gervin, Kalila, you know, they're kind of fodder, for want of a better phrase, for, for blends with grain whiskies and Kalila producing, you know, I don't know why I've picked Kalila as an example, but it's used so predominantly in, in every form of Johnny Walker, both peated and unpeated. But to see the breakdown here and wine casks and cognac casks and all that kind of thing, it is quite a fun product. Like, I think if you wanted to treat yourself and you just wanted something a little bit different, which is pretty easy on the palate and quite a beautiful, fruity, rich kind of nose, it kind of works for me. Um, track one gets a seven and a half. Like, it's just nice, it's pleasant, it's very, very easy drinking. Um, and I can't wait to talk to you all about track two, Firestarter. Uh, but yes, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.